Okay. So, um, uh, okay. So this is the discussion between Pasta and I, where we will discuss the utility of his pantheism, um, and it's a little bit different of a take on theism than what's um, uh, th than what a person will usually be confronted with, and so. Uh, we're going to examine how he uses it, and um, I guess we will let the audience decide for themselves uh, wh whether it is useful, etc. So um, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, I want to misrepresent you. So I want to let you first say uh, what your what your views on theism and pantheism are, and why you have them. So you can go ahead with that. Okay, so I consider myself in most social situations to be a pantheist. That is, that I believe that that which we call everything can accurately uh, be also referred to as God, um, in my understanding. The reason that I use this label is for social ease and for the ability to engage in social interaction in a way that allows the maximization of the amount of ideas expressed in a critical manner, right? That is to say, I use these terms because they are not poisoned by society and thereby when I engage with them, with people just generally, they are able to more likely engage with the real substance behind the ideas. All right. <clears throat> okay. So, so then um, it is a convention that you use. And so if I said, so if someone pulled out the typical vanilla atheist toolkit and said, um, oh, well, naturalism or scientific naturalism better explains whatever phenomena you want to call God, you know, um, and so we don't need the phenomenon of God. You're not even going to fight someone on that, right? Exactly. I won't. Okay. All right. So then you don't have that problem of proof. To you, it is um, it is purely a convenience. Um, and so and so for you, this is uh, this is this is something you found to work for you this, this makes it easier to talk to people is that the deal it it does it really does um you'd be surprised a lot of people are surprised but people tend to respect you more if you don't denounce god and poo poo on it you know most people in america believe in god so if you simply use a different language set to express the same accurate ideas that maybe an atheist would uh you'll have much more progress if you just use this term uh, pantheist. I mean, that's the god of Einstein, right? So people are going to respect you more. Right. So this, you say people are going to respect you more, and this this segues into my. I had sort of two different levels of objection here. So first, I wanted to know how it was useful for you, and that's something I'll easily give to you because I don't know your life and your experience. So if you say it's working for you, I'm just going to grant it. But I've also heard you say that. It is what everybody needs to do. See, this is where I consider the stretch is happening. So um, you, you, you think that a person marginalizes themselves by openly not being a theist. Is that the case? In a specific time and place, absolutely. Okay. Um, I can run down what my entire thought process is on this. Yep, if yep you let's, want hear, me let's to. hear it. Let's hear it. So, okay, let's hear for some concepts in society, there exist multiple linguistic ways of expressing them, the same concept. Um, some of these, some of these concepts have social baggage, others do not. And it may in fact be the case that one label holds the baggage and the other does not. Um, as an example, Atheism holds a lot of baggage in a specific time and place. For example, me right now, I am in the United States, and I am in the Midwest, which means that it does absolutely 
have uh, baggage attached to it. However, I'm also in a Discord call on the internet in a server that's predominantly secular. So in this specific uh, situation, I there is no baggage around it, right? But in the broader society, there is. And given the fact that this social baggage sort of poisons any conversation being had about uh, this given topic, uh, and given the fact that using some other language that accurate, also accurately describes what you're talking about does not have that baggage and avoids that poisoning, you should always use that language to facilitate, that is to say, uh, to the end of facilitating a good faith conversation that accurately represents one's views. Okay. So, all right, so this is where maybe we might be reaching some clarification because, you know, when you first got into this server, you kind of made a splash uh, and, and we all got a little bit excited uh, about your um, your pantheism and thought it might be in bad faith. But um, so so something here is making a little bit of sense because you're saying um, given given synonyms, multiple synonyms for the same phenomena that is being represented, um, uh, sometimes it must factor into our choice of which which of these synonyms to use. Um, uh, it must factor into our choice whether they have a uh, certain baggage or how they will affect uh, or uh, yeah, how they will affect the given context that we're going to use them in. And so for you, what you're saying is you're not misrepresenting yourself if you toggle or switch between synonyms um, based on the context, because after all, the synonyms represent the same thing. So you wouldn't be misrepresenting yourself. Is that the deal? Exactly. Okay. So, all right. And so do you still hold to the view that people, well, you said in certain contexts, people who do not call themselves pantheists are shooting themselves in the foot. So that is a little bit more, it, it seems like maybe at one point yes, in a when specific... I've talked to you, in a specific context, place, and time, they absolutely are. So, for example, uh, if somebody from this Discord server who uh, was secular, right, who was an atheist, uh, was invited to a uh, broadcast TV talk show, right, and they went on that talk show and they said, I'm an atheist, you know, poo-poo on God, all that stuff that atheists do in the, in the psychology of the populace. Um, they're not. They're going to make less headway with expressing the actual substance of their views than if somebody were to, uh, say, take a less aggressive stance on the God question and focus more on the aspects of God that are irrational. Right? I feel like that's the important thing for secularists. Now, this may be diverging a little bit from the t main topic, but... Um, I mean, that's the only difference between uh, my pantheism and theism is that I don't hold irrational things about the nature of God. I only hold to observe, observe phenomena about uh, the nature of what I call God, which is everything, right? Yeah. And by doing that, I can arrive at a very similar position as the atheist without uh, sort of uh, walking the hard road against society and against the pre uh the presumptions of society okay um so okay so then and, and just to be clear you say you don't you don't take on this the irrational views that a theist takes on as you put it do you say is there any difference between your idea of a pantheism and just like is it anything other than a name like is it in name only or is there is there any other philosophy behind it other than its use and well, that may be okay because 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 if it's purely pragmatic you know i'd say that's kind of all that matters i would say it's largely pragmatic i i do hold that i mean i do hold certain things about everything um 
but those could be also held by an atheist as well um, and they'd be fully okay. justified in calling themselves an atheist so I and I've expressed this before in this circle as well as in others that given your definitions of the word atheist I would be an atheist okay right? yeah so you just uh, you've just put together your way of splitting the dilemma which exactly I guess it's fine yeah so so now to the now sort of back to the usefulness of it <laughs> and um, I guess I guess ultimately I guess ultimately since you're the one using this idea then anecdotes do matter um, and so maybe it's been useful to you I'll tell you what this sort of thing has done with me in the past um, feeling feeling pressured to to do as the Romans went in Rome. Um, let's take the wolves in sheep clothing analogy that you've heard me make about this, and let's flip it. Let's say the sheep decided to uh, dress up like a wolf and hang around the wolf pack. Uh, you know, okay. Um, that's okay until the wolves are like, hey, you know, we're really getting along with you. Now, come with us to go hunt the sheep. You know, there's a certain point where you'll have to give yourself away or you will um you will have to betray yourself in my opinion mm. uh is what i have run into like for example yeah 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 i mean uh, i can kind of just... see what you're saying that if i if i'm constantly associating with theistic communities i may be made to uh contribute to the um uh, what is it? The poisoning of the term of, of atheism itself, uh, or even just in a small conversation. Even if, even just in a small conversation, if I'm like, oh, you know, these atheists and these people on the left, they don't believe in God. That's why they have no moral compass. And you're like, oh, well, yeah, I know, I understand. I believe in God, and you know, I, you know, I have a moral compass for this reason, and and. I'm going to have certain expectations of you and I'm not going to know exactly. It's kind of, in my opinion, cloak and dagger a little bit. It's like there's a cloak and there's a dagger behind it. And I'm not going to know your true intentions. And so I'm going to expect you maybe to, you know, maybe I'll invite you to church. You know, maybe, maybe I'll, you know, all, all those things. This is what I've noticed has happened when I have represented myself in, the, in this way in the past. Um, for example, you know, um, I think anyone in this server and most people on Discord know that you know uh, I have uh, I get a lot of my my metaphysical philosophy from Buddhism. I used to think that was too weird to talk about, so I used to just tell people I was a nihilist, you know. Um, and and I realized that 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 would make them um, that would just make them have certain assumptions about me that I ultimately mm -hmm. wouldn't sign off on. And you know, also when I would bump into another person who maybe shared the Buddhist views that I had. Um, you know, they would, they'd be like, oh, well, I thought you were a nihilist or something, you know? So, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it comes around to bite you in the end, the same way the, the sheep and wolf's clothing is asked, is asked to go hunt sheep with the wolves. Well, uh, I, I, here's what I'll say. If it gets to the point that they're asking you to go to church with them, you just say no, right? I have, there are certain things that I can't do. Right, because that would be a bad faith representation of my position. I can't betray myself, so to speak. Adopting the label of pantheist does not betray anything about the real substance of my belief. But going to church supports religion, which I would always be against, and I would tell anyone that I'm against religion. Um, but for me to sort of go up to someone and say, I'm an atheist who's, against, who's critiquing religion, they're like, of course. Right? Of course you're against religion because you hate good. You have no goodness in you. Blah blah blah. But if I say I'm a pantheist and you know I I understand the sort of poetic nature of of reality or something like that, uh, we can have a good faith conversation about the benefits and the cons uh, of religion as an institution. Right. Whereas that may have been restricted uh, if I took a different label. Right, so I'm All not right. gonna I'm not gonna go around like betraying what I actually believe in. Right, but right. I, so I see, I, yeah. It, uh, something else I want to add is that, um, people in society, 
and maybe this is a hot take that I have, uh, maybe it's not, people are stupid, okay, they're actually like very, very dumb, and, and what I mean when I say that is not that they're like, not like smart in the IQ sense, but they're easily manipulated by society itself, and thereby they are made to be dumb. So for example, uh, I, I see this in my life all the time when I talk to people about moral subjectivism, right? It, it, that's another poison concept. Unfortunately, I haven't thought of a way out of it yet, but I probably will try to get a way out of that in the future. Um, but whenever I bring it up, they're always, everybody's always talking about how I, I think it's okay to like split babies in half or something, you know? Wait, and, sorry, what? What, what topic exactly? I missed it. Uh, proposing moral or ethical subjectivism oh, okay. uh, as a theory of, of uh, morality, right? Yeah. People are always instantly go to, you think it's okay to rape kids and chop babies in half and all that stuff. And, and you can't argue with these people. Their minds are controlled by the society and the social structure that tells them that's what subjectivism is, right? A big part of that is religion, and they're told that and all that stuff. Um, and so you can see there's kind of similar things that happen to that that happen to the atheist question, that if you literally would just use a different term they would just engage with it, right? Instead of rejecting it wholeheartedly, the programming would not kick in and, and you'd be able to activate the intelligence in there, right? Yeah, yeah, so I see what you're saying. So like an example might be like, let's say someone makes a, a post that we consider to be relatively bigoted. Um, and so our option is to say, blah, 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 this is bigoted or reword it differently because the minute we use that word, we signal to all the right wingers that we're snowflakes, and so they're going to come at us, uh, and then and then we will and reinforce the partisan divide. But if we reword it and say, "This is maybe a little bit narrow-minded," or or something else, you know, we just mm -hmm. reword it, and we don't inherit the the baggage of that language, and we've said something possibly synonymous. So, are you saying that you calling yourself a pantheist is on par with something like this example that i just gave uh yeah basically but you have to remember the limits um i i can't use a label that doesn't exist socially because there's no utility in that so i couldn't go around like uh like for example with the socialism label that's another one that's highly poisoned but unfortunately there's no other label that i can kind of appeal to to get out of that right <laughs> So I have to I have to say, in order to represent myself truthfully, I have to say, yeah, I'm a socialist, all these things, uh, until some other label uh, manifests in society. I see. Um, hmm, okay. Um, so, so, um, so then your, your views of pantheism are kind of like a sugar coating around a, a pill um do they are not they do not serve as any metaphysical groundwork by which you generate your ethical theories and thereby generate any political views they're completely what they are not causally connected at all to your political views and the views you actually value right that it, i mean it's only it, it's only that. a sugar coating it, I mean, I'm hesitant to say that it's just the sugar coating because I think it expresses uh, not an actual substantive difference in my metaphysical view, but rather what I'm focused on, a, a okay. sort of like highlighting of a specific area. So like I define God as, as this concept of everything and what is that, you know, it's a, a pure phenomena right without form all that sort of thing we can talk about that i, I think it just merely expresses that a, a focus on that and that's all okay. which is why yeah. i would be hesitant and say it's completely disconnected all right that's fine all right so so it is a label that you use because because i know that ultimately on our like 
on on the theories of existence or metaphysics and all the rest of it you i and rascal and and frankly a lot of people in here are on the same page about kind of a non-realist situation you know Mm -hmm. um so 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 for you since ultimately you take that and the most important I, i it seems to me like the most important issues to you are political ones right like that's yeah, that, I, that, I would say so, but um, in order to get to the political, you need to talk about everything that comes before that. So I, right, right. I'd be hesitant so, to put anything on a pedestal. Okay, all right. And 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 just be clear, there's no gotcha at the end of anything I'm saying. I'm just I'm literally just trying to flesh out no, what you're I saying get so it. I can understand it. I get it. it. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is trying to make make i'm trying to make sense of where exactly the idea of pantheism fits fits into this mix and it would make sense that if in your philosophy some of the highest priorities were the political ones then the symbols and you know all the semiotics that you would use would conform to those ends and so yeah i I would say the political aspect is closer to the ultimate end that uh is being sought after and so it would be of a higher priority but i i just said that clarifying thing to say you can't discount what builds into the political sphere right i use the term pantheism because ultimately it's useful to get to get me where i want to go just like i would use any tool all right okay so 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 then i'll i'll just grant and and take your word for it like i said that it's useful for you um it seems like in the past i've heard you say a a stronger version of the of the general statement that that you made where uh, it seems like you've been a little bit stronger in the past on the idea that atheists shoot themselves in the foot but you are saying now that no they um, do they do shoot themselves in the foot if you go out and you say i'm an atheist blah 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 you are putting yourself at a disadvantage mm. in a uh, generalized concept of American society currently. Okay, so so um, I'm I'm pretty I, I, yeah I don't know um, so I'm pretty uh, so this this is where our disagreement is going to be. Um, I'm pretty um, open about my views of uh, you know. I'll say depending, you know, because my honest opinion on theism is really depends. Like, I'm not going to tell someone like you who just makes a label, calls it God, that that's wrong. What can I do to refute your label? You know, so um, but beyond that, you know, I'll generally say that I'm I'm an atheist. So um, and and I think it's important for me to do this because I think I think the I consider the price I pay um for for not being understood and being again being a sheep who's asked to go sheep, hunt sheep with the wolves to me all the scenarios that that example represents those are the bigger price to pay than maybe people noting that i am not necessarily aligned with them so uh i yeah i i actually think that's the worst scenario and this is coming from someone who, you know, most of the people I know in real life and care about in real life are conservative Christians. And I used to sort of tiptoe around and sort of maybe try to talk to them in their own terms. But then they misunderstand you and actual actual problems can come, can, can come up, you know. Uh, they can think, they can expect you to raise your, your kids a certain way, you know. And and then you can find yourself too far into like t- turn around. And so I've just I don't know. To me, to me, it's it's important for people to know what I'm about. It's, it's important for people to hmm. know what I think so that they can make their decision. And and if they don't want to associate with me, then um, there's nothing I can do about that. Not everyone is going to to approve of me. And that is a a bullet I'm willing to buy. I only want to attract company who who does approve of me i do not want people around who are unwittingly approving of me uh but they don't know the truth that's not what i want so i i would consider like 
you know, that's why I don't go around telling people I'm a nihilist anymore. You know, I'd rather just tell people, yeah, I subscribe to like a, you know, a large chunk of Buddhist philosophy and, you know, yeah, maybe you think that's weird, but we can talk about hmm. it. There, there's a you lot know? to unpack with all of that. For example, uh, the last thing you said was the nihilism question, but uh -huh. wouldn't it be, uh, wouldn't there be some utility in fostering uh, the expansion of understanding of nihilism instead of this poisoning of the concept itself and what if it was what if there existed some other term that represented the nihilist position but did not have all the baggage of that term thus allowing you to engage more freely with the discussion surrounding the actual substance of the idea of nihilism okay i see what you're saying and and so i do i do respect the vigilance of trying to avoid um uh poisoned as you call it terminology poison terminology will that will immediately signal to people what side you're on and and then they won't even think think about what you have to say okay i understand this is very important it's like we're walking in a minefield these days of poison terminology so with nihilism I mean, I have my own way. I, I, I talk to, for example, nihilists, um, and I also have a way I dunk on them, depending on who I'm around. Like if I'm a, if I'm if I'm talking to like a Platonist or a theist, I'll be, I'll say about nihilists, I'll be like, yeah, you know, they think they're really skeptical, um, and it's just ironic that uh, they'll doubt the whole world, but uh, the one thing that they'll grant is themselves, uh, and yet they can't they can't tell you really anything about what the self is and you know they just accept it as a given you know and mm. so that that is my criticism of nihilism and then the way i talk to a nihilist is i'll say oh yeah i i i respect the balls to be that skeptical but i feel like we left one of the most important stones um unturned and it's that you know we say cogito ergo sum or uh, it's solipsism and i'm a brain in a vat and so i'm just going to you know, go with the useful, fallible tools, but but it may be important to also realize that the self is a, a, a thesis a ship that you can't really identify either. So that that's my way of talking to the people on both sides of either of that fence, and I don't have to change my label um, to to do that. You know. No, I get that right, and so to a small extent, I see that you're doing exactly what I would do. Uh, with that specific scenario um, and to a certain extent I do that myself with other topics like for example the uh, moral subjectivism question instead of saying uh, morality is subjective I'll say morality as is as objective as re as reality is Right, which is also subjective, but you know, we'll get to that. You know, <laughs> we we get yeah. to that as we have a a broader conversation. But the, you know, to some people, that may be seen as obfuscation, but I see it as allowing the real substance of the idea to get across. Because if I opened by saying morality is uh, a subjective thing, well, then I get the immediate rejection. I get the immediate you want to split babies in half and and all that stuff. But if I say morality is as objective as reality, well, then I've settled the question. Now all I have to do is have a deeper discussion that isn't as poisoned just inherently about what reality is, right? And if we say that's subjective, well, then maybe they're like, okay, I can see what you mean now. And what we've done is now this person no longer holds the poisoned thoughts about subjectivism in the first place because they understand uh, why subjectivism doesn't entail being okay with chopping babies in half right uh, by doing that entire thought experiment and, and that whole uh, way of approaching uh, the conversation if you, if you see what I mean right and so I think that using different language in different contexts is extremely important yeah I, I I think I have um, I think 
I have um, a more clear view of why you do this now. So um, at first, it looks like bad faith, like when you first joined the server. Um, uh, but you're just saying, given multiple synonyms for the same phenomena, sometimes we'll choose a synonym based on the context. That's not misrepresentation. Um, so I'll grant it must work for you. I'll take your word for it. Uh, still not sold on um, it uh, on the issue of uh, atheisms at large shooting themselves in the foot. Um, uh, you know, there there's a lot of different places where where you know you you go to a different city, you go to a different state, you go to a different country stuff's just different people just think differently their assumptions are different and, exactly. and it is otherworldly yeah so if i um, went to europe i call myself an atheist immediately okay yeah yeah but but here's the thing in america you you see a very unique phenomena and this is something that's very pernicious it's it's the fact that the poison becomes the position right over time the, yeah like yeah. you can see this <laughs> the biggest example is with socialism socialism is when the government does stuff socialism is when high taxes and all that stuff well eventually people start calling themselves socialists when they're not socialists and they just want uh the government to do everything right <laughs> and and it's the same with atheism as well, and you see it with these edgy Reddit atheists who are really influenced by just rebelling against their family or whatever. And so they take on the uh, straw man that was conjured up by their family, right? And say, well, you, uh, I hate you. I'm the thing you hate, right? Right. I'm this right. thing. Yeah, it's similar to like, okay, certain, a lot of pro-choice people will, you know, they'll, you know, depending, regardless of what someone thinks about it, they'll just they will make the case that it's they are not killing babies. But then there's a certain kind of pro-choice lady who will like wear T-shirts that say, "I like killing babies. I killed my baby." You know, so um, th those people, yeah, they have, like you said, the position became the poison. Uh, they uh, they decided to become the straw man. Yeah, we we yeah, this is radicalization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to a to a large degree, <laughs> um, so and you can um, lose and, and, a lot of real substance um, it, from the discussion through that process, and it's really sad. I mean, I'm sure you I'm sure you've seen it with the nihilist thing, right? It's happened big time there. Sure, yeah. Um, I I actually ultimately don't think my my, my genuine opinion is that nihilism did not go far enough. Um, I, again, it, it it's this is a whole different discussion, but it is telling that that solipsism is this sacred, unbreakable bedrock that everybody considers a, quote, problem, the problem of solipsism, right? The problem of, oh, the only thing that exists is me. Uh, well, if you had just got, been skeptical a little longer, you <laughs> might have discovered something else, you know, but because you stopped at the self, now you have this narcissistic and hedonistic philosophy that you're left with. So, um, in my opinion, you just go a little bit further. Like it's it's like they were almost at the finish line. You know, they're like, oh yeah, everything doesn't seem to have uh, this internal substance. Oh, it sucks. I'm left here all by myself. Wait, wait, do it to the self now. You know, <laughs> and and then you know then we're if we go far enough with it then we're left with you know the opposite not not a narcissistic <laughs> philosophy because we constantly need to remind ourselves that the self is a fiction so exactly. yeah so so in my opinion uh and, you know and and if people do just want to be hedonist there's not really anything i can say i can just say oh, okay have you know have fun being confused you know um <laughs> not not that not that anything is wrong with the actions you might be engaging in it's just that if you if you don't question who you are if you don't try to see through the different mirages of the self then uh yeah you might end up being confused so if if you're okay with being confused then then there's nothing i can criticize but if you don't want to be confused then um 
yeah, you might need to look into that more. Um, but uh, so, so I don't think nihilists are as as um, you know as black pilled and as skeptical as they claim to be because they 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 didn't have the spine to 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 keep going with their skepticism when it came time to to question the self and so they were left with solipsism uh and um reeling this back into the main main topic um so i so so, so I, I i believe you've had i i've received some clarification on why you do this um and maybe a little maybe a little bit more favorable to it now now that i see that you're you're just uh, deciding to step around explosive minds that will signal to partisans and cause them to just basically morph into werewolves and rip out of their clothes and you know yeah because people their are minds. like that people are like that yeah. even i find myself doing it sometimes and i, I hate it when it happens it's right? it's you, yeah you hear There's something that someone says and then you get the feeling you get the you, and you say this that the other thing right and it's uh it's part of the human condition quick. you have to fight against yeah. it yeah, let me real quick say something. Okay, Quantum, um, uh, we'll wrap this conversation up here in just a second, and then I will let people come up, and we'll just kind of do an after show, I suppose. All right. Um, I can so, answer questions okay. if you want from the yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up real quick. And so, um, so, so yeah, so, so it makes sense that you're trying to avoid um, uh, corrupted language, and that it really is a minefield, and. And I do think it's a good issue because not a lot of people are thinking about this or talking about it. And it is pretty terrifying. There's an arsenal. You can make, you could just make a, a page with two columns, you know, with two columns and write down all these, like there's a left and right version of each word. You know, there's, exactly. you know, there's snowflakes, there's bigots. And you're guaranteed that if you just start working these into your vocabulary, you it's like you cast a spell on a certain category of people they they lose their minds it's like you hypnotize them and they become hostile it's pretty scary to be honest and so yeah it's good that there's someone trying to step around that um i hope more people think that way um i you know, and i you know for a while well you know since i'm not overly political at least in a partisan sense i i keep that stuff out of my vocabulary um i don't and if you hear me use it, it's it's definitely ironic. <laughs> it's an irony. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but you, you almost have to I do that, right? If you want to be like an actual, <laughs> like, honest political actor, you have to be anti-partisan, right? To a certain extent, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, or or, or uh, yeah, basically, the list of of partisan jargon the signals uh, that signals to the people on your side and the people on the other side it, i think it's basically just a represent, representation of people's unconscious reactions you know like i said in the example of you know someone maybe make some post that we could say is bigoted if i say um oh this is bigoted i signal to two people um i signal to lefties that you know Come, come get behind me, rally. Let's talk shit about this person, and then I signal to the right people. You know, come fight me, and that's what will happen. It's terrible, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so if you spell it out, you, you walk around those explosive minds, and you're like, well, I think this is maybe closed-minded, and we maybe are not aware of how this might affect certain categories of people. Uh, then, then now we're starting a conversation that might have more intent behind it. So yeah. <laughs> I, I, all right yeah <laughs> yeah so unless unless there's another another point or case you want to make um or or last remark then um i'll just move into letting people on stage so that they can uh we can move into that after show and then maybe you can answer some questions if you want you or yeah, yeah. um the whole reason i do this is because i want to reach a society where we actually can engage with the real substance of ideas um I, that's why it was so frustrating to me to be accused of bad faith uh throughout a lot of the time that i talked about this 
and that's probably why you know maybe I said some of the things like oh atheists they st they cannot reconcile themselves with reality that they are surrounded <laughs> like stuff like that because the whole point of what of why I do this is to cut through uh, the systems that indoctrinate us and prime us to have emotional responses uh, to different words and every it happens to everyone because everyone is stupid in that way to a certain extent yeah 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 true all right all right well uh thanks for having the conversation i feel like there's been some clarification and um all in all i do appreciate your approach i, th I think it's um i think it's good to have people on whatever side of the issues we're dealing with who are willing to also criticize their own side um uh because that's quality control so um all right um, so I'm going to let people come up and ask questions now. Uh, so let's see. Quantum. Uh, a lot of quantums. A lot of people with quantum in their name. Why Why? Why can't I bring you up? Okay. All right. What's up, quantum? Greetings, mortal man. Hey. What's up? So um, I do you want to say? Pasta, don't you think, Pasta, that we need to normalize the term atheist? Uh, I don't think we. I don't think uh, that rational people um, are are still in control of what that term does anymore. I think that it's now in the hands of irrational people who push it towards um, uh, the actual misrepresentation of atheism. So we we see with these broader movements of atheism, with a lot of these people like Reddit atheism that sort of thing. Uh, where you get people just being like, uh, you know, smugly like appealing to scientism and stuff like that against um, theists. And so in the atheist movement, atheism becomes scientism. And all of these atheists who are scient uh, who believe in scientism themselves uh, j become atheists and push that conception further and further until now, socially, that's kind of what the term means, right? So for a mere individual to be like, oh, I'm an atheist, I'm going to change all of that, it's kind of out of their hands at this point. You know, I, I'll tell you what I think first. I think as, uh, that as long as these kinds of, as long as these kinds of misrepresentations happen, it is impossible to change people's minds. Because as long as they have some corrupted image of what atheist means, um, no matter what you say, you're confused. You're the confusing they the you image. Have a faith in God, you're confusing it, the word for the concept. It's not the same. You have to divorce the two. You can you can push through it and you can make them think about the real ideas. I want to say something real quick, um, Quantum, uh, regarding what 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 you're saying. Um, in a situation where there are these misrepresentations, there's you know, you can't change people's minds. Take the example I gave where we think someone made a post that we would call bigoted and we hold off and we don't call it bigoted and we decide to reword that. In my experience, when you step around that jargon, you can actually end up having a productive conversation. Um, you can sometimes change people's minds. If you give ground, sometimes people will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I see where you're coming from. But if we use the the um, the rhetorically charged lazy buzzwords, then immediately we will just um, will alienate a certain slice of the pizza from us and we will we will rally a certain slice of the pizza for us, but so even the people on the our term side, a pantheist instead, right? Um, well, it, you know, if it, yeah, I'm gonna say ultimately depending on how it's implemented, but I'm just re, I'm just referring to what you were saying about um, uh, you you said kind of in general that like when when terms are uh, you know, misrepresented, there's we can't really change people's minds. I think it makes all the difference. Um, in, in our ability to change people's minds, whether we use the loaded language or whether we decide to articulate it in, in a novel way. That's what I think. And what is the novel way you're suggesting? And ask Pasta that. Uh, yeah, the novel way I'm suggesting, 
Okay, well, for, for pasta, it's pantheism. Um, for me, um, it's it's the example I showed where instead of saying, this post is bigoted, I say, oh, this post is, you know, maybe a little bit narrow-minded and doesn't take into account how it might affect certain categories of people. That wording it makes all the difference, in my opinion. Um, it, because Wording is I didn't everything. S- uh, yeah. You're, you're telling Here's me, Pastor, a- that when you say that you're a pantheist, all you do is just calling the universe God and you don't add anything yeah. other exactly and that allows me to have a good faith conversation and if you think that i'm being like this is absurd or anything um there was a survey that asked people whether or not they'd be in favor of banning the use of arabic numerals in uh in teaching like elementary school and like something like 40 i think something percent of respondents said yeah let's ban those even though that's our writing system that we use and the reason they said that is because they're inherently biased against arabic things right but if we just use the term a uh, conventional number system right they, it would have been a totally different response in that survey so yeah wording is everything and it matters a lot well pasta i used to think that that when you say that you're a pantheist is just a lie but if it's if you just call the universe God, it's technically not. Exactly. Well, okay. I have to admit that you did move me with this with this survey. Um, Jesus, Jesus. This <laughs> is I wonder. How, I wonder how more. I wonder how worse it would be if if we called them uh, the Muslim numerals. <laughs> My God. Should we ban the Muslim do, numerals? Do you still yes. have that survey? Can you like send it if you have it? Uh, well, I'm recording this right now, and I can't really like move things around on my screen but I'll I, can, that. I can look that up if you want afterwards I'll link it to you yeah if that's the case then you might have a very good point I have to admit it's like well, this, I also know they've done a that. one they've done one where it's a made up city name and the question is should we bomb this made up city and I think it was the city from like uh, like the what, what is it uh, Aladdin. It was like the city from Aladdin. Ag- Ag- right? Agrabar? Yeah, Agrabar. Agrabar. <laughs> and, 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 and there was like a large amount of people who said, yeah, we should bomb it. <laughs> oh. We should bomb Agrabar. <laughs> you know, oh it's probably full God, of terrorists. Man. It's <laughs> a big thing. Members. Right? It's, <laughs> you know, if you ask these people, do they have these biases? They'll say no, but subconsciously they do, and it absolutely exists. Okay, Pasta, you changed my mind. I think I agree with you. It, 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 so, it, it, so Quantum, are you a pantheist? Are you a pantheist now? <laughs> sure, whatever. Oh my God. A <laughs> pantheist? A pantheist? I am dazzled. You see, and, you, and you're dazzled because you yourself even had... I mean, I, this is me being a bit cheeky, but everybody here had such the, uh, you know, abrasive reaction initially. That's part of the whole problem because... Uh, us being secularists, we are on the contrary side, and so we have the same response uh, to the other, which is the Christian or the theist, right? No, my, my response is, is is to these surveys you brought up. <laughs> okay, okay, sure, sure. But 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 obviously yes, yes, you're right. Okay, okay, uh, um, yeah. Does anyone uh, else you, have Pastor. any questions? Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, I thought I saw a hand raised down there. If not, then uh, I guess we can wrap up. So, sure. yeah, it's a good conversation. Pasta. Yeah, always nice to talk. Yep, yep. Um, so, um, yeah, okay. Um, I'm sure some people watching will be converted converted to pantheism maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh you're spreading the word um but yeah no yeah no uh in all seriousness it was a good conversation uh, i felt like we got some clarification and um yeah um so yeah that'll be it so yeah, yeah you can I'll stop and